Welcome to this video on navigating the Practice Labs portal. We're very excited today to show you our new interface and show you how to get the best possible use out of it by ensuring you set up the, the, the consoles the best way you can and how to get most of your time during the Practice Lab. So let's jump into the interface now and I'll take you through navigating the portal. So depending on the courses that you've been um, subscribed or purchased, you'll see them available to you in the Practice Labs page. Now this may be the full library, or it may be an individual course that you purchased. So as we scroll down, let's go to something that um, is new. We'll select the, the Practice Lab we want to work on, and we're taken into the lab guides available to this particular title. So as you can see, we have between 10 and 15 different learning guides associated to this certification. So how we develop the lab guides is we have a look at the exam topics and from there we start to write some practical examples on how to solidify the exam objectives so that you can remember it next time you go in to sit the certification exam, you can kind of remember what you did and how you configured that particular component, um, which hopefully will, will stand you in good stead going forward. Not only that, you do gain the, the relevant skills on that particular component which you can take into the workplace. Now with the lab guides, there's no dependency on doing the first one to carry on to the second one. They're independent of each other, so if you feel like you need to learn something, in this case, maintain Active Directory, you can jump straight into that point and start working from there. What you'll notice with the, the new interface is on the right hand side in the console, we have some information notices and this information notice gives you some detail on what is required for you to complete. So you'll see here to ask you to select the lab guide. So let's jump into one. So I'll jump into something halfway down the list and I'm now taken to a new page which tells us what uh, exercises will be included um, but more importantly, in some of the, the lab guides, you may have multiple configurations of a practice lab. So uh, exercise one and two may have a specific setup, and as you move to exercise three and four, you may go into a different lab config. Now, the, the ability to move between those is seamless, and you will see a, a hyperlink for the second set of infrastructure that you'd work on. In this case, we have just a single one and it starts at the introduction. You'll notice the call out in, in the pane on the right hand side. Now it gives us a, a slightly different instruction. So as we click on introduction, we take into the first page of the practice lab. Now my suggestion is to you is, is let's get set up before we start working on things. This will give you the best chance of getting the most out of the practice lab going forward. So let's Let's remind everyone, and certainly with the new interface, where everything is. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, we now have the content panel. Now the content panel is where the information of this particular lab is contained. And that's broken up into a number of different sections. So the introduction, you know, what you'll be covering in this particular lab guide. A diagram detailing what infrastructure is actually available to you. You'll notice the IP addressing um, and the naming convention in there. You'll also have um, some details on what you specifically need to power on. Now you'll notice in this particular lab, probably in the background, you'll see that something's powered on automatically. In some cases that is true, and in other cases you'll be required to power on uh, each of the, the servers independently. But we'll go through that in a second. As we scroll down to the bottom, there's some information on, on how to connect and then we navigate to the exercise detail using the uh, items at the bottom of the page there, the, the next and previous. And this, this tabs you through the different exercises. So you notice we have the, uh, the exercise detail and then the step-by-step -step guides on how to cover the specific learning objectives for this lab guide. We still have the ability to uh, print PDFs or, or download the PDFs. It's now managed using the uh, printer icon in the bottom panel. That'll launch a new window. You can then save that content as a PDF and then print it out for later usage. One of the, the new enhancements compared to the, the previous platform 
is we now have the tools bar which is located in the middle of the page. This is the, the, the operation center, if you like, where you power on servers, you have the ability to connect to the consoles, reset, and we'll go through each of these functions in detail um, later on, but this is where the, the controlling of each device happens. What else is located in, in the tools bar is our timer. Now, for those of you who have used labs before, you'll remember that there's, it's an unlimited usage model. All we ask you is that you are working when you say you're working. So every 60 minutes, you'll be notified on the screen with a, a panel that comes down and says, are you still using the labs? As long as you answer, yes, I am, we won't log you off. However, if you don't respond within five minutes, we'll assume that the session's been abandoned and we will go ahead and, and log, log you out of the, the platform. As you become more familiar and you don't want that notification to appear, if you just click on the auto logout um, timer, it resets back to the 60 minutes and you will never get prompted for um, the, the timeout message. Right at the bottom of the uh, tools panel uh, is the power on all, and, and I'll show you what that means in a second. Reset all, we'll cover it a little bit later, and then the logout, pretty straightforward. Once you've completed your session, use the logout feature, it closes the, the screen down and shuts down all the servers on the back end. So if I go back now and we have a look at the, the console of where you actually carry out your work, let's go back to the introduction where it actually says to us what servers we need to turn on. So in this case, we need to turn on a server called PLAB DC01 and the Windows 8.1 workstation. So as I go to the tools menu, I have a look for 8.1 and I power on that particular device. Now, at this point, I always like to remind people that the, the Practice Lab platform is not a simulator-based solution. This is accessing real hardware located in a data center. So when I go ahead or come into here and I power on a, a workstation or a server or router or a switch, something is happening you know, in the same way that you would expect in the morning when you're using your PC. You come into the office or you're at your school, you turn on the power, it goes through the, the checks, it loads the operating system, services need to get ready, and within a couple of minutes, you're then able to log in and start work on your, um, your computer. Same thing with the labs. Accessing real equipment, we, the reason we keep them powered off is to, to be efficient with our energy consumption, with the lab load, to ensure that everyone gets kind of a fair uh, piece of the pie, so to speak. So you power on um, that device, and, it, and as soon as it becomes available, you'll see it be displayed in the console on the right-hand side. Now, again, just to, to emphasize the, the message panels, these can be turned off permanently by clicking the don't show again and close. Or alternatively, as you become used to it, you can just close it in this particular session. Um, next time you log in, it'll give you that notification again. Once you're comfortable, turn it off you know, and you're good to go. In this case, I'm just gonna hit close and now we can see that the server is available. Let's just close that again. Server's available. Um, the steps are ready for you, and we can start working through the device. But like I said earlier, before we start clicking away and, and doing what we need to, make sure that your, your viewing panel is as you'd like it. So within the new platform, you have the ability to change the size of the server desktop or the content panel. So, and that's done by simply dragging the bar across to a size that really works for you. In my, my screen, in actual fact, the default looked pretty good to me. So if we just go to the default, looks good. I'm happy with the content panel. However, when I look at the server, I notice that I actually have a, a scroll bar across the bottom. And, and that isn't too functional. You know, of course I could use it, but it would be better if it wasn't there. And this is one of the major changes in the new interface. We now have the ability to launch the desktop to how much space you have available on your particular um, PC or laptop. And that is managed by the little icon at the top of the tools bar. Click it once, it lays out our standard default size. Click it a second time, and in actual fact, it will fill the space that you have available to you. Now you can see the scroll bar has disappeared. I have a good view of, of the, um, the, the console that's being presented to me. 
And now I can start working with the lab guide on the left hand side to carry out the steps. And if I kind of give you an overview, it's asking me to open the uh, group policy management console. So I go to tools, and I start following through. Let's have a look. There we go, lost it for a second. And as I bring that up again, just make that full screen. It, it then takes me step by step. And you'll notice in the lab guide that we rely quite heavily on uh, the screenshot elements. And this is to give you guidance that what you've just carried out, um, you know what the expected output is. So as you can see in this first one, I was asked to uh, open the group policy management console. In the next screen, I can see that the group policy management console is open and I know where to go next. So as I follow along, there we go. And you can see it looks very similar to what's in the left-hand window here. And I start working through the, the, the rest of the guide. Now, another change in, in the interface is previously, you would have to access the devices by clicking on them individually to, to bring focus to the lab that you're working in. As you can see now, we've actually implemented a, the devices to be presented in a single console by simply scrolling between the two of them. So as I scroll up and down, I can actually see both desktops in a very simple quick time um, and the impact if I was working on one, what the other would be, which, which is a great feature. And we do have the ability to change this back to the static mode and we'll go through the settings in a, little bit, uh, a little bit later in this video on how to enable or disable these features. I said I'll take you through to the, the power on all uh, devices feature. So in some of the introductions, you'll be told to power on all the servers in the particular lab. Now you can go through and power them on individually. And we, we can, you know, through one click now, we can simply hit the button and everything powers up at the same time, saving you time to get you ready to do the work in, in the shortest space possible. Now I've kind of mentioned the lab guides are there to give you this guidance on uh, completing a, a set of known tasks. However, the lab could also be used as a sandbox environment. So in this case, I may have been uh, given some information from a colleague or someone at school, um, something I've read on the internet, and I don't want to test that feature on my own PC. Using the labs as a sandbox environment, now I can actually go to any machine and because I have admin access, I can go and install a specific feature. So let's kind of test something out here. I'm gonna go ahead and go add a role. And you can see, you, you, again, going back to my point, this isn't a, a simulator-based device. You have free control to, to go ahead, try things out, you know, remove the fear factor, go and, go and experience you know, these different components. And you know what, if you do make a mistake, that's no problem. We've got the safety net there for you. So you may go and install remote access and, and work your way through and you may find, you know what, the desktop is now not responding as it should. I, I've lost connectivity to it. You can see all my devices are now on, all presented in the window. But you know what, I can't, I can't continue because the first server I've been working on has now become out of sync. That's where we look at some of the other options available to us. And, and the most important one being the reset feature. So the reset feature is there, that safety net. If you do make the mistake, no problem. Hit the reset button. The lab gets shut down to its, its original state. Everything gets powered on again. And you can run through those steps again. And I think we learn more from those mistakes we make than just following through the, the guide's parrot fashion. Now, in some cases, a reset of a single device is fine if you're working on one device, but what happens if you're doing something in a domain environment and the, the lab becomes out of kilter, what you then do is use the reset all. And the reset all will shut all the lab servers down, default configuration, bring them back up, and then you go back to work. Now, We've seen we can be quite flexible with this view and, and some of you may be using the, the, the practice labs on a much smaller screen. And, and in that case, what you can do is actually use the collapse content panel. So just next to the, the small icon which reset your screen size, you actually have the ability to 
uh, collapse the content uh, window. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now you can see I have a whole lot more space to actually um, run the labs in. I then resize my window and I have a full connection, a full screen connection, if you like, to the labs. I can see everything on the page. I then can go back to the console following what I need to do next and simply switch back to the, the interface. And again, scroll down and, and use the multiple devices as I need to. I'm gonna just get back to the, the default layout as, as I would you know, suggest you do to get the right view for yourself. And then let's have a look at the settings menu. So hopefully you get a, a little understanding around the, the lab platform itself, how to manage your view, how to connect to servers, how to power them on, and there's a number of other features available to you as well. Rebooting, suspending the server. These things will be highlighted more in the lab guides on when you need to use them. Um, but to know out of this video, this is the panel on where you would actually um, connect to them and, and, and execute those functions. If we move along to the, the settings menu, and this is, this is an important aspect to, to get to know as well, so that you get the most from the labs. So by default, we'll, we apply some configuration in terms of how to connect, um, what, what style to, to show you, but you have the flexibility of changing these up. So I'm not gonna go into each one of these in too much depth. We will shoot a, a, a different video where we go into each component and um, view its impact on the lab platform, but I would just wanna give you a sense of, of what these things can change. So these, in the settings menu, we have the, the email address function. This is where you put in your details in case we need to notify you for any um, support purposes. You have device controls and al alongside each of the, the tags or the, the descriptions is a small information icon. If you click on that information icon, it actually gives you the relevant details of what that uh, label does. And how you switch between the two different uh, modes is simply the, the green indicator lets you know which one is, is on at that time. And to switch between the two, you just simply click on the function that you want available. So we have some device controls. And like I say, these are explained in more detail in the information panels. We then have a platform control. Um, and one of the new things that we, we've introduced um, just recently is some accessibility features. So this, this is for um, users of the platform who require a little more assistance. So the accessibility uh, features turn on some advanced components in the background in, for uh, screen readers and the likes. And then we also have a, a high con contrast mode. So in, if I turn on the high contrast mode, you'll then see that the, the lab platform now is displayed in a completely different um, view in terms of its color scheme and those features are enabled and disabled do, uh, using the settings menu. So I'll go back to the, the original view and then you have the ability to change the font size and we still have the out to lunch feature. A little reminder what that is in terms of out to lunch. This is the case where um, you're working, you're halfway through a lab and you get to the point where, yeah, I wanna have a sandwich, I just need to pop out for a meeting um, but I don't wanna lose my work from, from the practice lab. There you have the ability to turn on out to lunch. So I'm going out. You now have 90 minutes where the lab is kind of frozen in time for you. You go out, it counts down. As you come back, I'm back from lunch, you click on the timer and you then can carry on from where you left off during uh, your previous session and, and continue to work. Now. Obviously, during the, the, the brief demonstration in, in this video, we've seen everything kind of connects and works. In some cases, if you are having problems um, trying to connect to the labs for whatever reason, the, uh, the console isn't displaying as it should within the window, or you've, you've received a message, it's not connecting, you can always try to reforce the connection by hitting the connect button. If that still doesn't work for you, have a look at our support area. In here, we'll have all the, um, the videos that we produce around support, the documentation, and in the case where you need to log a support call, this is where you go as well. 
and you fill in the details and that'll go through to our support team. We have a 24 seven um, coverage on, from our support guys. Within 15 to 20 minutes, you'll have a human response, which, you know, someone reaching out to you, trying to help resolve those issues, whether they're technical or um, courseware related or lab guide related, they'll be on hand to, to help you out. Going back to, to kind of where we started, please get familiar with the interface, get the layout um, configured as, as you need. That way will give you the best chance of, of utilizing and using the labs to the best of their ability so you get the most out of it. I hope you found this video very informative and, and useful to you. Again, just to stress any problems, please reach out to our support team, have a look in, in the documentation provided. Thank you very much for watching.